All right, good morning, everybody. Thanks for being here on time. Let's go ahead and get started. It looks like most of us have logged in. First of all, I just wanna thank everyone for um, being punctual and for bearing with our first week of classes being online this week. Teaching online sucks, learning online sucks. I guess the convenience is you can sleep in and stay in your dorm, but here we are. We're gonna make the best of it this week and continue with classes. And hopefully on Monday, I will see you all in person. Um, I just wanted to establish that for our online classes, I love when your cameras are on. It's nice to see everybody. Um, at the same time, I'm not going to ask you to do that. If you feel more comfortable having your camera off, that's fine. Keep in mind, we will do some activities throughout our lectures, even when they're online. So make sure you're, you're tuning in and do your best to tune into lectures. I know it's easy to get distracted. Uh, I know when I have online meetings, I'm terribly distractible. I will try to intersperse some activities throughout and keep things brief and on point for us as we're online to reduce that. Having said all that, welcome to Zoology 329 Human Anatomy. This is a course I've taught several times in the past and I'm excited to teach with you again. Today's um, format for our class looks like this. I'm gonna first introduce the general topic of human anatomy, what it is. It's going to be a, a, just a quick overview of what kinds of things you can expect to learn in this class. And then uh, I'm gonna just share a little bit about myself so you know where I'm coming from and what I'm bringing to our classroom. And then I will orient you to our class structure where you can find resources, how things will work, what your textbook is like and that kind of thing. And then we have a, um, just a couple of reminders and we'll get everyone on your way. So let me go ahead and get started. Oh, I wanted to mention as well that I am recording uh, this session and I will post the recordings of classes online after class as a resource for you. Um, I'll talk more about that in a little bit, but I just wanted you to make aware that make you aware that I am recording this today. So human anatomy and physiology, what are they? Anatomy is the science of our body's structures and the relationships among structures. So we can think of anatomy, um, excuse me, uh, and physiology is the science of body functions and the integration of body functions and specifically uh, how they work to maintain a constant internal environment or homeostasis. So we have two terms, anatomy and physiology. You can think of anatomy as the science of nouns related to the body, the, the structures and the things that make up the body. Whereas physiology is more the science of the verbs of the body, the actions of the body and what it does. Of course, these two things are very, very closely related and the structure of the parts of your body help us understand how they function and how they interact with each other. Our class this semester focuses, as you know, on human anatomy. So anatomy comes from the Greek uh, meaning uh, literally translating as cutting up. So what we know about the human body generally comes from uh, dissecting cadavers and learning about how all the pieces are connected. And we'll do some of that in lab, uh, unfortunately not with human cadavers, but we will be uh, conducting dissections in lab and looking at the actual parts of actual bodies. Now notice that here I will often throughout class provide the Greek and Latin roots of words to help you make sense of them. I find that under, this course is generally a lot of memorization, but the more you can put contextual clues to those words and understand where they come from and what they mean, I think the easier it is to memorize them and, and to know where they are in a lot of cases. And so you'll see me provide these roots as, a, as kind of a, a helpful study tool for you. And you'll see abbreviations G for Greek and L for Latin. It's not terribly important if it comes from Greek or Latin, um, but it may help to uh, remember where those terms are. And I think it's kind of interesting. So anatomy is broken into a number of subdisciplines. Specifically, uh, gross anatomy is largely what we'll be studying in this class. And gross anatomy here just means what you can see with your naked eye, so without the need for a microscope. This, this uh, study of, of anatomy on the gross level can be broken down a couple ways, either in terms of regional anatomy, so learning for example, all of the stuff that's in your abdomen or your thorax or your arm. And this is generally how medical school approaches anatomy because you often learn, you know, if someone comes in with an injury, they're going to be injure their upper arm and you have to figure out what part of the upper arm is injured. Often people don't come to the emergency room and say, I injured my connective tissue. And you have to figure out where in the body that connective tissue is because pain is regionalized. 
Undergraduate courses in anatomy, however, take a more systemic approach and we learn the parts of the body one organ system at a time. So we'll learn about the skeletal system, we'll learn about the muscular system, and so on. We'll also be using surface anatomy. So this is when we can use landmarks uh, on the surface of the body to know what's underneath. And also a little bit, especially at the beginning of the course, the first week or two on histology, which is the study of tissues at the microscopic level. So our first lab will bust out the microscopes and look at a whole bunch of slides of various tissues and you'll be able to identify them. And so if we put all this together, we can think of the structural organization of the human body as a hierarchy working from uh, the cellular level, which I don't have here, which is obviously the, uh, actually you can have the subcellular level, like how organelles in a cell interact, the cellular level, the tissue level, which is a group of cells performing a common function, the organ level, which is a discrete structure made up of more than one tissue. So for example, your heart um, is an organ that includes different kinds of tissues. For example, it includes connective tissue, it includes endothelial tissue, and it includes muscle tissue. And so those tissues together make up this organ, this discrete structure. Most of the time, when you generally think about the human body and you talk name parts of the body, you're gonna name the lungs and you're gonna name the heart and you're gonna name the stomach. Those are all organs. We also can think of this moving further up in this hierarchy at an organ system level. So how organs uh, interact that perform a single function. So for example, we talk about the urinary system. We talk about your kidneys and your ureters and your bladder. And those organs together form this system that work together to, form, to perform an important function. Now in this class, we'll be focusing on these tissue organs and organ systems. And so here's a slide here. Um, this is from your textbook, but gets into a little more detail about this hierarchy of organization. I just wanna put this in the broader context. Remember that we can study uh, the human body at the chemical level, how different molecules interact also at the cellular level, those are primarily covered in your physiology courses. Those of you that have taken Zoology 251, Anatomy and Physiology with me, um, or Dr. Penowis uh, are familiar with this. Our class will focus on tissues, organs, and organ systems. And we can also move up and focus on the whole organism, how all of these things interact to, pr uh, to produce a, a functioning organism that does stuff in the world. We're not really gonna talk about that so much in this class, but of course, all of these things um, together build up to create functional organisms in the world. We're also going to be studying other branches of anatomy a little bit, specifically a little bit of embryology. I don't get into that too much in this class, although it's particularly interesting. So how the human body develops from uh, a single cell, um, how, then developmental anatomy, how that body develops over time. We'll get into that a little bit, specifically changes that happen between when you're an infant and when you're an adult. Also talk about a little bit in here about pathology. So this is changes in your body due to disease that can hinder its function. A little bit about radiographic anatomy. So that's what we can see with x-rays or MRIs or other imaging forms. And then finally, um, how functional morphology which describes how the parts of your body interact to perform a task. And I just wanna highlight here that um, this might not be covered too much in traditional anatomy courses. I'll probably spend a little more time on it because this is an area of research for me. And specifically my research, part of my research is studying the functional morphology of lizards. So here's some videos from our lab showing lizards performing tasks. So you see a lizard running on the bottom sprinting and you see a lizard clinging on the top and trying to hold on when it's being pulled back. And in the lab, we study how the shape of the lizard's body, its arm lengths and its, its pelvic and shoulder girdle widths and its head width, um, and also its claw shape and structure allow it to do these things in nature. So just, uh, uh, just as an aside, I will talk about functional morphology uh, uh, a good bit in this class. So with that in mind, um, just let me pause here and see what questions you have about our general um, uh, idea of what human anatomy will entail. You can feel free to just unmute yourself and speak up, or you can kind of raise your hand with the little icon, or you can raise your hand in the video screen, just do whatever you need to do, get some attention. All right, uh, Chris, go ahead. Yeah, it's off topic. What kind, what kind of lizards are those? Ah, uh, I, I will talk, I could talk about this for the rest of the class. Uh, those are the common wall lizard, Podarsis moralis. And so they're native to Europe, 
um, but they actually have uh, in, inhabited some parts here in Ohio, specifically in Cincinnati. And so my research group studies how they are successful in this new weird place. Yeah, thanks for asking. Any other questions? All right, I just wanna give a, a, a brief overview of how the class will be structured and what we'll study again. Um, so the, we'll start off the course looking at the tissue histology, as I mentioned, as well as the integumentary system. So this is the structures that form the covering on the outside of your body to protect everything inside of it. It also performs some other important functions. For example, it produces sweat to keep you cool, synthesizes vitamin D, um, has a lots of uh, sensory receptors, et cetera. And this includes the skin, the hair, and the often overlooked fingernails. Of course, we'll look at the skeletal system, which protects and supports the body organs and provides a framework for movement for your muscles, uh, essentially provides lever arms for your muscles to allow you to move. Um, also, bones are a very active tissue. You'll learn about this in class, but they produce blood cells, they produce um, immune cells, they store minerals, they do all kinds of really cool stuff. We'll cover the muscular system, which provides for manipulation and movement of both the internal and in, uh, external environment. So it allows you to move through space, walk across your room, but also provides a mechanism by which food can move down your esophagus and through your digestive system, for example. Um, in the first uh, month or so of court, the class, we'll be covering the integumentary, skeletal, and muscular system. So this will take us through uh, about mid-February, and I'll talk more about the course schedule in just a minute here. We'll also cover the nervous system, which is the system that integrates its information from all parts of the body and is very fast acting to allow control of the body, both the muscular system, but other aspects of your body's function as well. And this includes your sense organs, which we'll talk about. So sense organs being your eyes, your olfactory senses associated with your nose, your ears, et cetera. We'll cover your endocrine systems, which are often overlooked, but these are uh, different glands found throughout the body that produce something called hormones. And these hormones are important for regulating your growth, your development, your reproduction, and your metabolism generally. And you can see some of the more famous uh, endocrine glands here in this diagram, your pineal gland, your pituitary, thyroid, thymus, adrenal, pancreas, ovary, and testes, et cetera. We'll also, of course, cover the cardiovascular system, your heart and associated blood vessels, which uh, transports oxygen to your cells, removes carbon dioxide and other wastes, um, et cetera, et cetera. The lymphatic system or immune system, we'll spend just a wee bit of time on this. The immune system is um, in, incalculably complicated. Um, and this has actually come into the public conscious in, in recent years, especially as we learn about how immunity from different uh, infectious diseases works. So we'll talk about this a little bit in some of the major associated organs, the lymphatic system, as well as your spleen, thymus, bone marrow, and lymph nodes. We'll also cover the respiratory system, your lungs and associated airways, which of course is responsible for gas exchange. Your digestive system, which um, breaks down food into absorbable units and then distributes this or helps just gets this to where it needs to go to distribute it throughout the body and also eliminates waste in the form of feces. And um, the urinary system, as I mentioned earlier, which uh, regulates a number of aspects of your um, body's internal environment, uh, specifically water balance, acid base balance, electrolyte balance, blood volume, and it eliminates, um, and it keeps all of those um, variables in homeostasis and eliminates nitrogenous waste from the body in the form of urine. And finally, we'll cover briefly in class the reproductive systems, basically how humans make more humans. Now, I won't spend too much time on these systems in this course, but I think it's important to know that the overall function of the reproductive system is to produce offspring. So from an evolutionary perspective, one can make the argument that all of your body systems essentially serve the function of the reproductive systems, because if you're not producing offsprings, offsp offsprings, offspring in an evolutionary sense, then your genes aren't going to be passed on to those offspring. And in an evolutionary sense, um, you're going to be a, a dead end. 
And so you can make the argument that all of these systems in the body are serving the production of offspring. Of course, there's other ways to contribute to subsequent generations of humans through co-parenting and, and L parenting and all of these kinds of things. Um, but in a strictly genetic sense, all of these uh, systems are focused on allowing you to pass your genes on to the next generation. So just to summarize what I've talked about from here, our class is going to take a systemic approach to anatomy, mostly focusing on gross anatomy, but we'll also learn some histology, some embryology, and some developmental and functional anatomy along the way. And we'll cover all of the systems that I just went through. Now, to cover these systems, we need to master some basic terms to help keep us oriented when we're talking about the body and how all of these parts are, are related to each other and where they are in position to each other. And we will get to this in our class on Friday. So that's where we'll pick up on Friday. And that is all I have for my quick introduction to how, what anatomy is and how we're going to tackle it this semester. Let me pause here and see what questions you have before I offer a quick introduction of myself. All right, great. Well, let me introduce myself then uh, a little bit to you so you have some familiarity with my background and where I'm coming from. Um, I, as a kid, I loved animals. Here's a picture of me from, I don't know, somewhere in the early 90s based on the shorts with a couple water snakes wrapped around my neck. I don't know why I was doing that, um, but there I was. Um, when I was in my 20s, I taught high school for a number of years in Denver, Colorado, where I lived, and I um, actually conducted some field projects with snakes in urban parks in Denver with my students there. It was great. Um, and then in 2011, I moved to Iowa where I completed my PhD. And specifically, I studied populations of garter snakes in the Sierra Nevada mountains of Northern California. And we examined aspects of their, their physiology and their behavior and how that related to how they um, adapt to different environments. It was very fun. I enjoyed myself a great deal. A lot of hard work too. After I completed my PhD there in, at Iowa State, I then took a two-year, uh, what's called a postdoc position, which is a position you get kind of after you finish your PhD, but before you become a professor. And I had the good fortune of receiving a, a fellowship to study in France for two years, where I studied the common wall lizard, the same species I showed you earlier, and that's here in Ohio by coincidence, and I had a great uh, time doing that with a great team of folks you see here. Uh, that is us at the top of our mountain research station. Uh, pretty nice view there. And then here at Ohio Wesleyan, this is my third year uh, here, and my research focus uh, includes salamanders. And there you see a couple of students in the research lab that have conducted salamander work this past year at the Krauss Preserve, one of OU's sites. Um, very cool work we're doing there. We're, um, mark, we're completing a mark recapture study where you catch salamanders, measure them, collect various data, and then you let them go, and then you can catch them again. And they're individually marked so you can see how salamanders are growing, how they're moving, and how they're surviving. Um, we also study a little bit of snakes here at Ohio Wesleyan um, along the Delaware Run right on campus. And of course, urban lizards that I mentioned earlier. Here's a picture of us in Cincinnati from this past summer. Fantastic team of students there. If this is something you might be interested in, uh, feel free to drop me a line and I'd be happy to talk to you about it. And if you want to know more about it, we have a very cool lab website right here. It's uh, glare, G L A R E O U dot wixsite dot com. Check it out. It has links to cool pictures from us over the summer and some of the research we're doing. So, just a little bit about my background. I think it's helpful for you to be familiar with um, who I am and where I'm coming from. Um, and now let's, uh, let's talk about the class. So this is an upper division course in human anatomy. Those of you that have taken classes with me before, um, specifically anatomy and physiology uh, with me or Dr. Panamas, uh, I wanna just start off by saying right here that this is a step up from that. This class is a, a more intense, moves at a quicker pace, um, and I will provide every structure possible and offer every support I can to help you succeed in this class. Be aware though, especially those of you just coming off of 251 from the fall, for example, that uh, this class is, is, is definitely a, a step up. Um, having said that, anyone who was in the class with me last fall, I know you're uh, ready for it. So I feel, I feel confident. 
Um, I am the instructor, Dr. Eric Gangloff. Um, preferred pronouns, he, him. Feel free to call me Dr. Gangloff. Professor Gangloff is fine. My office, where I am right now, is in the Science Center, room 331. The best way to contact me undoubtedly is over email. Uh, I put it here, but it's also in the syllabus, of course. And also in the syllabus are my student hours. These are sometimes called office hours, basically a time when I'm available for you to drop in uh, for questions, to ask, to clarify things, etc. I do these hours in the lab room. That way, if you have questions about our models or what we're doing or anything like that, all those resources are right there. It's also a bigger room. If you want to come and just use the space, hang out and study and just know that I'm there. If you have questions, you're welcome to do that. And that's every Monday from noon to 2 p.m. Also happy to meet with you in other hours or anytime my door is open, feel free to, to pop in and say hi, ask questions. Students that have taken this and my other course before in their evaluations, that one of the questions is like, what advice do you have for, for future students in this class? Every semester students write, go to office hours, it helps a lot. Um, and actually, um, that was definitely true in the, in the fall semester as well. So I want to encourage you to take advantage of that. That's just a quick overview. Uh, actually, let me, let me give you one more slide here. The course does have a required book. It is the Human Anatomy, ninth edition by Miriam uh, Brady and Malat. Um, the book is re a really good resource. We will read it a lot. And I'm also very specific and intentional about reading assignments. I will say, read this section to this section. Um, and that will be directly what we cover in lecture. I'm not going to give you, just say, okay, go read the first five chapters. Good luck. Um, I'm intentional about it and it is required. You will need this to be successful in the course. It's available at the bookstore online. You guys know where to buy books. Um, I have a copy, should be available at the library for a short-term loan. If you need a copy, talk to me. And importantly, the eighth edition or even the seventh have basically the same information. Um, if you wanna get an older edition, save yourself some money, some money, that's fine. The only difference will be that the page numbers will be a little bit off, but I will assign the readings. I'll tell you like what sections to read. So you should be able to figure it out without any trouble. So yeah, if it's, if it's easier, cheaper to get the older edition, you can find it wherever you can find these books, then go for it. Um, there is information about this on the syllabus that we'll talk about here in just a second. So the next bit I have planned is um, we'll require you to log into Blackboard and I'm just gonna walk you through the course structure. However, I will again, pause here, see what questions you have about what we're doing before we do that. So I'll pause here. As I'm pausing here, go ahead and, and log into Blackboard. Um, and I'll walk you through a few things that you need to find in there. Any questions as you're doing that? I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces and names on the, uh, the class list here. That's fun. All right, well, if there's no questions, go ahead, please, and log into Blackboard, and you'll see our class Blackboard site looks something like this. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and find the syllabus, um, and you can see your link to it there, Human Anatomy Syllabus. It's a PDF file. Go ahead and go to Blackboard and open that up. I'm going to launch a poll that you can complete when you're ready um, to move on. So the idea here is I just want to make sure everyone has this ready to go before we move on. So just go ahead and answer any of the questions. It doesn't matter which one you answer. They're all the same. I just was feeling goofy. And I can't have a poll with just one question. So there you go. One person figuring things out. Nobody picked, do I look ready to you? Good, that's that's bodes well for the class. Although the vast majority of you picked Yabro. Uh, I don't know what that says about you. We won't, it's not a psychology class. We won't, we won't read into it too much. All right, I've got one person who's not logged in yet. If you want to send me a message, I can kind of help that um, find what you need. Or if you just need a second, that's okay. Good, all right, I'm gonna end the poll. Um, don't wanna share the results. So now that you've got that pulled up, you have a document that looks like this. 
uh, your human anatomy syllabus. Um, one of your assignments for Friday will be to read through this carefully. And on Friday, we're going to have a class uh, Kahoot uh, about the syllabus. I'm going to ask questions and just give you a chance to kind of debrief it uh, a little bit. So I want to make sure everyone has this. Please do read through it. It will take you 10, 15 minutes, um, but it does have a lot of important information. Also lays out expectations for attendance, details of how you'll be graded, uh, tentative course schedule, and all kinds of good stuff in there. So take a look at that. And we will review it in a little more detail on Friday after you've had a chance to, to go over it. Our next step here is to go back to Blackboard and we are going to look at your class programs. So those of you who have had me as an instructor, instructor before, this is very familiar. Um, those of you who I haven't had the pleasure of having in class before, this is new. I wanna make sure you get it. So go back to Blackboard and go ahead and open up the class program for January 14th. And then I will launch a poll. You can let me know when you're ready. Oops. Oh, here we go. All right. You can go ahead and just answer this poll when you have your class program for Friday pulled up. Um, it says the class program for 14th of January isn't available for me. It's not available. Okay. Hmm. Mine's not available till 1030 today. Oh, did yeah, I say like two oh, minutes? <laughs> I'm a goof. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, well, it will be ready in just a second. And honestly, it'll take me just as long to change. Well, here, I'll just go ahead and change it. You just give me one second. I'll get that going for you. Sorry about that. I didn't want it to be available before class because I wanted to make sure you all got it at the same time and we could walk through it. Um, but I foolishly set it for 1030, thinking that we would uh, get to it by 1030. That's two minutes off. A lot of you are, uh, that's a little bit concerning because a lot of you are putting that you're ready to move on and you have it, uh, but it's not available. Um, I won't look into that too much. All right, I'm going to relaunch the poll. Please do make sure you've got this ready to go. The cost will make a lot more sense um, if you are um, able to follow along with this. So I'm going to end this poll and I'm going to, I'm going to relaunch it. Okay. So please do make sure you have that pulled up before you say, okay. Mine also says I can't open it. <laughs> Did you try just now again? Yeah. Try just reloading that Blackboard page. I just made it available. Yeah, I had to log out and re-log in, so that'll probably help. Oh, sorry about that. I don't know why that's the case, but... It worked for me just now. Okay, good, good. Thank you so much. And I see a question coming in the chat here. Um, is the Vital Source online textbook? Yeah, the, I should mention, I think I mentioned the syllabus too. The electronic version of the textbook is fine, however you best uh, can best learn. Um, it's the exact same thing, uh, just in like a digital format. So. Cool. I see a couple people still getting this. Um, let me give you another minute to make sure you've got that. Sorry for the technical difficulties. All right. Everyone's got the class program. So class programs are essential to this course. What I've done here is I'm trying to set things up to be as focused and intentional as organized uh, as possible. And to do this, for every single class, you have what I call a class program. And it outlines what readings, surveys, videos, <clears throat> excuse me, other assignments you have for the, for the next class. Also serves as a place for me to put announcements and reminders and everything like that. So let's just walk through this real quick. You'll see, I'm not going to announce that there's a class program for every class because there will be a class program for every single class throughout the semester. And so the class program will have the due date up at the top. Note that the assignments here, <clears throat> excuse me, this is the class program for uh, January 14th, which is Friday, which means that all of the work should be completed in advance of Friday's class. 
you'll then see a list of assignments for each class. This Friday, you're going to be reading your syllabus carefully so you can be prepared for our syllabus uh, activity on Friday. You're going to complete a, an introductory survey and I have a link in a QR code there. And you're gonna read, read some of your textbook and then sign up for Visible Body, which is the software we'll use for our lab. Notice that with each of the assignments, I give you an approximate time that it will take to do that work. Um, so that you can kind of plan accordingly and so it doesn't surprise you. Of course, for something like reading, I'm kind of estimating. It's going to vary depending on your own reading speed and how carefully you're reading. Um, and generally in class, you can expect to have anywhere from an hour to up to two and a half hours of work between every class. As I mentioned, this course is pretty intense. Um, there's a lot associated with it. Generally, your program will be pretty light between Mondays and Wednesdays because you have lab on Tuesdays. And so I know that you're dedicating a lot of time to that. Um, but especially Wednesdays or Fridays and Fridays and Mondays, you'll have assignments. Um, keep up on these. Um, of course, you can wait till right before your exam and do all your reading then, but I don't recommend it. I recommend keeping up. I try to keep things reasonable and organized. And also all the information is in one place if you need to reference it or you miss a class and want to get that information. You'll also see uh, reminders about upcoming events in class. So for example, I have a reminder that your first quiz is going to be a week from today. Um, I'll give you some details next week, but I wanna get things rolling uh, with that right away. You'll also see very importantly, your uh, class learning outcomes associated with the work. Now these are important because this is essentially a study guide. If you take these outcomes from every class program and cut and paste them into a list, you'll have basically a study guide for everything that you're expected to know up to that point in class. Um, and that will be super helpful for your quizzes and exams. And finally, if I have space at the bottom, I'll have a funny anatomy related cartoon. Um, this one's pretty good, if I do say so myself. And that is the class program. Um, that in, in this example I'm showing here is your class program for Friday. You have that in front of you, so you can see exactly what the expectations are for Friday. This is a great place for me to pause and see what questions you have. How um, soon will you post like every program? Like, will it be like after every class, like Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Great question. Thanks for asking that. Yes, I will have um, almost without fail. I will have the class program ready immediately after your class. Uh, sometimes it might be a tiny bit of a delay. Like if I wanna see how much I cover in class to see what's on the program but it will be right away or within like an hour or so of class so that you have like the full time between to work on it. Any other questions? Great. There's a lot of important information about the class and my expectations and the class structure and resources and all of that that I'm not going to describe to you right now because it's all on the syllabus and I'm intentionally not gonna sit here and just read the syllabus to you because you can all do that and you'll do that for Friday. So with that in mind, um, don't forget we meet again Friday online. Uh, so we will follow the same link. This link is in Blackboard. It's gonna be the same, um, the same link for all of our classes. I see a question coming in. Um, the quiz will cover content of Friday through Wednesday, actually today through Wednesday. Um, the, the quiz you have a week from today will cover everything we talked about today in terms of anatomy, just general ideas through what we cover um, Friday, Monday, and Wednesday in class. So with that, um, go ahead and see your class program for your assignments for Friday. I am happy to stay online here for a minute if you have any questions. Otherwise, uh, feel free to shoot me an email and I will see you at the same Zoom link um, at 10 a.m. on Friday. Thanks much, everybody. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Gangloff, I just wanted to clarify.